Hello everyone, today I want you to discover my region, Friuli Venezia Giulia, in the northeast part of Italy. Today and tomorrow I'm going to ride a bike from Pordenone, which is my hometown, right to the border with Slovenia, in the far east of Italy, to the town of Gorizia. Temperature are about 10 to 15 degrees. It's raining, actually it rained a lot during the night. Now it's a little bit better. Hopefully we'll stop in a couple of hours. In this video, I will tell you a lot of stories about these places, the history, but as well also about e-bikes and how it can revolutionize tourism and mobility in places like this one. Let me tell you right now that I'm not a cyclist at all. My goal today is to explore the small villages of my region. The more I stop, the more I will be happy. I am getting out of uh, Pordenone city center through the park of the seminar, which is a really nice way to get out of the city in a very green context. I think that last time I came to, through this park was probably 96, 97. I was at the high school and that day was the uh, five kilometer high school run, which was a great way to spend a day outside the classroom. This is the river Cellina, it comes down straight from the Alps, but right now is the, the, the water is flowing uh, underneath the surface. It's uh, about 11 a.m., so three hours since I started in Pordenone. Still a little bit of drizzly, a little bit of rain. Is that, it hasn't really gone away, but at least it's not raining as at the beginning. I just stopped for a quick snack uh, and then we we'll continue Discovery Freely. This is the famous Magredi land, which is almost like a, a tundra steppe in the middle of, of, of Rioli. The name Magredi derives from the local dialect for arid land. The land here is poor of water and the soil is made up of rocks, brought down to the mountains by the nearby rivers. We arrive in Spilimbargo, which is a beautiful medieval town. The name derives by the Dukes of Spengenberg, which was an ancient uh, noble German family who owns the castle here. And this is not an isolated case, as many abbeys, castles and lands in Friuli were owned uh, by German nobles' families. Since the times of the Holy Roman Empire, Friuli was heavily influenced by the German culture. In year 1077, Henry V Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire recognized the Patriarch of Aquileia as the Lord over Friuli, which remained a separate identity until 1420, when it was conquered by Venice. young, about 20 years old, I was a, a football referee. We used to go around the province and the region to every football pitch. And actually, I was just passing by this one and I recognized it. But I remember that uh, one football player kicked the ball and the ball went out over the fence and hit my car and broke the, the, the windows. And the landscape is actually quite changing. Now it's more like Food and we are going to the feet of the Alps. We will not climb the Alps, but we'll get some uphill and downhill. We're getting close to Pinzano. Che oh. salita! La strada di Pinzano. 
Anno dopo. This is the famous Tagliamento River. It's uh, the most important river in Friuli and divides the province of Pordenone to the province of Udine. Historically, eh, along this river uh, passed the, the commercial route and the trades from northeast Italy to uh, the German lands, to Austria, Bavaria, Bohemia. That's the reason why you find a lot of castles, because they were used to control the trade. And this is a very important and particular spot, because this is the place where the river comes out from the Alps and goes into the Pianura Padana, which is the flatlands. And my final destination is just behind this, uh, uh, this little mountain, which is a town called Gemona. And here we go, at least now it's downhill, I can relax a bit. On the side of the road, I found the tombstone dedicated to Ottavio Bottecchia, the first Italian to win the Tour de France in 1924. He died here on this road while he was training on his bike. I touch foot in an Italian fashion. Actually, it's quite tiring. I'm not fit for the bike. I finally arrive in Gemona at around 4 p.m. The battery of the e-bike is gone, and I'm soaking wet. It never really stopped raining during the day. I finally arrive in Gemona, an ancient uh, Longobard town. I'm just in front of the dome which is one of the few buildings that survived the terrible earthquake that uh, strike on this, on this land in 1976. On 6th of May 1976, and subsequently in September of the same year, Friuli was hit by a terrible earthquake. The epicenter was here, near Gemona. It was a tragedy, but the local population fiercely emerged with a strong will to quickly rebuild what was lost. And this is the view that you can see from the castle of Gemona, on the valley of the Tagliamento. Day 2, 7 a.m. is about sunset time and it doesn't rain. Yes! I hope to find at least good, a little bit of good of sun as we go along the most beautiful hills of Friuli. Going up in. To see Gemona city center, this town is all up here. Been here yesterday, uh, now I'm passing by on the way out, and I finally discover what the statue represents, which is quite unique. It's actually, it's San Cristoforos, which is the protector of the travelers. So, San Cristoforos, pray for us. Finally the sun. It's amazing how much more energy it gives and how beautiful is the world under its light. This is a good spot to see the sunset and actually it's like moments like this that pay you off for all the misery that you've been through in day like yesterday under the rain. cycling towards east and I can see the first bell towers with a traditional roof that looks like an onion similar to the ones that can be seen in Germany, Austria and Slovenia.
One of the things that this land is really proud is its amazing white wines, which are among the best not only in Italy, but in the entire world. Some of the names, Ribolla Gialla, Friulano, Colli Orientali and the Romandolo, which is actually it is where I am right now. Finally arrived in Cividale, one of the most beautiful cities in Friuli. Originally the city was founded by Julius Caesar and under Roman times it was called Forum Iuli, hence Friuli. If the name Friuli is an ancient one, the name Venezia Giulia is more recent. It was added in 1863 when the region was conquered by Italy from Austria. It also has Roman tradition, as in Roman times the region was called Venezia and Istria, while Giulia derives clearly from Julius Caesar. And now I will show you a jewel of Cividale, the small Longobard temple. Masco? I'm lucky enough to visit a small temple on my own, and for a moment I close my eyes and I imagine how life could have been in those medieval times. After a quick lunch, time to go back on the bike and leave Cividale for the last part of my journey. I left Cividale and uh, now I'm going to the hills of the Collio, which is uh, very famous for its amazing uh, white wine. I understand now the real potential of the e-bike. At equal effort, it allows to expand your horizons, the limits you can explore. Friuli has a lot of touristic attractions, but they are spread over a myriad of small villages. So far, it requires to have a car to visit them, or be a really good cyclist. The e-bike makes them more accessible to everyone, without a car, and especially old people like me. This is like the uh, eastern border of Italy and back until the, the 80s, until 89, there was the Iron Curtain. Now it's time to go. I'm going heading in that direction uh, to, for my final stop, which is Gorizia. Still a uh, few kilometers to go. I'm about to enter Gorizia. After two days crossing small villages and the countryside, I'm almost confused by the city. While I'm doing that, I'm thinking about my parents and thank them. They not only gave to me their e-bike, but they also came to visit me for dinner in Gemona last night to come for me after a day in the rain and in the cold. Italian mom are always the best. Gorizia. And here is the final destination, in the Gorizia Castle. Finally, I got it here and it's over. <laughs> it's been an amazing journey and it's been an amazing two days. Yesterday was like cold, pain and rain, but today I was rewarded with some of the most scenic road i ever seen. Hope you enjoyed, see you at the next one. Ciao! Ciao.